Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hi, can everyone hear me? Can you hear me back there? Can you hear? Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm Bob Surridge. I'm president of the Southport Historical Society. And I want to thank you all and welcome you uh, for coming to our uh, September general meeting and, and presentation. We're going to have a good time this evening. I'm going to guarantee that to you. Uh, I'd like to get, to get started. <laughs> There's a camera guy. I got him. Okay. I'm going to get started with the uh, pledge to the flag. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, for all. Thank you. Um, Donnie, would you like to come and do the, a blessing, please? Good afternoon. Uh, you may be seated. Uh, you don't have to stand. Uh, uh, I was given the task of doing the blessing, so let us all pray and bow our heads. All wise and our Heavenly Father is once again, or oh, we come to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning in our right minds. Uh, we also want to thank you, Lord, for this event this afternoon. Uh, we ask that you bless each and every one here and the ones who are not here. Lord, I ask if you would please to bless us and keep us while we're here at the garrison line. And when we leave here, ask if you would send your guardian angels back to eat with each and every one of us, back to our homes and loved ones. These and all blessings I ask in Jesus' name. And Lord, forgive me, I forgot. Bless the food that uh, some who brought will be eating. This in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, thank you, Donnie. Uh, to begin our program, I'd like to invite Becky Felton uh, to come to the microphone. Is she going to talk to us a little bit about the uh, the upcoming Wooding Boat Show? Um, this September meeting has traditionally been, for the last several years, a meeting where we would have a program related to wooden boats. And because of the uncertainty about this particular season, we decided not to try to do that. And much to my surprise, I read that we are having a program related to wooden boats. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even have to figure it out and plan it. So it's absolutely wonderful. Um, the uh, shanty singers are, uh, will come for the second year to the boat show and we'll be walking around singing their shanties. Um, many of you knew my husband, Captain Burke Felton, and shanties were one of his most favorite things about wooden boats. He loved, he couldn't sing worth anything, so he would not have met that criteria to be in his group. But he would have, no, I promise you he wouldn't. Um, uh, he, he loved Shanty, so he would be really happy to know that we are celebrating that aspect of wooden boats um, this, this September. So I wanted to share with you, I know you probably can't see it from there, but you're welcome to come and look at it closer. This is the um, poster for this year. This also will be featured on our t-shirts. Each year we have a local artist in the contest and we choose a great art piece to put on our poster and on our t-shirts. These will be for sale at the show. Um, there are also some items for sale at the Maritime Museum. I'd ask if you haven't walked past the museum and look at, on their porch, there's a boat that we're raffling there. It's a beautiful, really beautiful boat this year. Um, so you can uh, put your money down and get a raffle ticket and maybe get a chance to win that and lots of other prizes. So the boat show this year will be on November 6th. We used to hold it earlier in the year until we got washed out by tornadoes and hurricanes and various things and so we decided to move it to November 6th. So we tend to do it. It's down at the Yacht Basin. If you haven't been there, 10 to 4 on Saturday. 
lots of good things going on, so we hope to see you all. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, Becky. I, I think the uh, wooden boat show two years ago was the uh, shanty shanty cruise first time, first time out. And, and we, okay, we, we appreciate that. Thank you. Right. Um, Bonnie Bray from the Up Your Arts organization couldn't make it tonight, but she asked me to uh, to let you all know that on October 25th, over here in the community building will be the, the kickoff event for the Southport Open Your Doors project. Now this, this is the project Ginger Harper had donated the, society, the historical society doors from the, house, from the house she just had remodeled. Beautiful, 100-year-old, solid, solid pine doors. The uh, Open Your Doors project is 12 artists have taken those doors and made artistic creations from them. I have seen a, I have had a peek at a couple of them, and they are just, just fantastic. So that that kickoff event uh, for the door program will be October 25th, uh, four, four o'clock, four to six, six o'clock, uh, and all of the artists will be there. You can meet, you can meet them, as well as their beautiful, beautiful cre creations. So that's the Up Your Arts organization. Um, I want to mention for the Historical Society that October 1st, just, just coming up very quickly, the, we will begin the <coughs> commemorative brick program will start for 2021. You know, so the program will go through October 1st through December 31st. Now these commemorative bricks are the bricks that are lining here on the, on the walkway and in the walkway over over there to my to my right. Um, bricks are uh, four by eight bricks or donation of seventy-five dollars and four by um, four by or excuse me, eight by eight bricks are hundred and twenty donation of hundred and twenty-five dollars. All right. Now, without further ado, Mr. Terman, Tim Terman, come and join us. Tim is the, the captain, captain. captain, okay, yeah, no, I was thinking of those other words you're talking okay. <laughs> of the Southport shanty, shanty crew, and asked Tim to come with the crew that's in front, of, in front of me here, and give us a little background on sea shanties, and then perform some of the sea shanties. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I'm going to raise this up just a little bit. Well, it's so short. <laughs> so, uh, uh, thinking about this uh, event tonight, and you know it's, it's about history. I knew that because it was the Historical Society, so I knew it was about history, but it's also about music. So I've gone back and forth in my mind and wondered, uh, well, what are we doing here? Are we doing history or music? So we're doing both. I decided to uh, kind of slice it down the middle, but I'm going to give some preference to the music. Thus, you're in for a treat. I'm not going to talk so much. <laughs> but first, this, uh, there have been problems that have, uh, you know, I wake up in the morning sometimes, or in the middle of the night, and I wonder about these things, and maybe you can help me. You know, we used to have these pirates around here, like uh, uh, Steve Bonnet. Or is it Bonet? I don't know. But anyway, I call him Steve Bonnet. And he was captured right out here. And uh, so we know about the pirates, but the thing that perplexes me about pirates is you could never, uh, historically, reading in, in the history books, you could never really get up a poker game with the pirates. You know, they're out here sailing up and down the Gulf Stream, marauding, burning, sinking ships. It looks like they'd have a little time for recreation. You couldn't get a good poker game going with pirates. Who knows why? Shout it out. Why? Oh, thank you. Well, they were always standing on the deck. 
I thought you would know that. You can go to piratejokes.com, okay? So anyway, what we're going to uh, talk about and sing about are the uh, merchant sailors and fishermen uh, going back uh, to the 1800s and uh, the songs that they sang. So uh, mostly what we are into here, this group called the Southport Shanty Crew, and this is important that you have this in your head, that's our name, and I'll tell you why later. But uh, mostly we're talking about deep water sailors, the Briggs, the Brigantines, the Barks, uh, and schooners that came up here uh, with uh, shipping a cargo from across the world. Uh, from Bali to Australia to Liverpool, around the Horn to uh, California. Uh, and and they, they had to sing work songs. Of course, work songs go back, way, way back. I don't really want to get into that, but uh, they were work songs. Sea shanties were work songs. So when we uh, sing them, you, you, what you've got to imagine is you're on a, a ship that's going like this and the wind's blowing and the waters, green waters come up, up and washing over the, the deck and you're hanging on for dear life and singing a shanty because it's so important to get the work done. Um, they, uh, Richard Dana wrote a book called the uh, Two Years Before the Mass, a great classic of American literature, right? And he wrote this book, uh, it was published in 1840, and he, he was writing a book about a voyage that he made in uh, 1836. He was a Harvard uh, student and came down with the measles, as I understand it, and it affected his eyesight. And someone suggested that he needed to just take time off from school, maybe go on an ocean voyage. So he walks down to the harbor and gets a job on a ship going round the Horn to California. And he chronicles this, this voyage. Now, what I'm getting at is where, where did the whole uh, uh, sea shanty uh, that those words come from? In his book, Two Years Before the Mass, uh, he never mentions a sea shanty. He mentions these songs over and over that they sang, and he said there were things couldn't be accomplished unless we had the right song and the right singer leading the group. Uh, so they were very important. Uh, their their uh, sea shanty is rhythmic, it's simple, and it's call and response. The shanty man sings out, the crew sings back, and that way they get a lot of work done doing like that. And you, you'll get the hang of it when you see us uh, sing here in a little while. But anyway, so just to a time orientation, uh, he wrote that book, well, it was published in 1840, the term sea shanty really didn't come about until later. We're talking 1850s, 1860s. This was the height of uh, uh, the merchant sailors in the clipper ships and so forth that we, uh, uh, that we hear about and read about. So that's, that's when I think the term the shanty came up. Before that, there are records of sailors singing song in time as work songs going back to the 1400s, way back. Uh, and if you've ever heard of a Gandhi dancer, anybody know what a Gandhi dancer is? Gandhi dancer? Well, this is a railroad uh, term. These uh, guys, uh, railroad tracks, and this is, this is 1800s too, right? Railroad tracks would get out of alignment and they'd get a crew of, oh, I don't know, 15 or 20 guys out there and they'd have the lead singer and they would take these pry bars and put them under the, under the rail and flip them. And they all had to do it at the same time. At the same time. It was call and response. So these songs were work songs ashore. There were work songs out there uh, on the oceans. Uh, let's see. So, anyway, since this is a historical society meeting, 
I thought you might be curious about how we came about, how we uh, we started uh, singing shanties. Um, this uh, is in the foggy past. It must have been 2017, way back. And I was on the internet looking at various things, and I came across a video of a guy named John singing Bully in the Alley uh, in a pub called the Dubliner in St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm not sure where it's St. Paul or Minneapolis. Twin Cities up there on the Mississippi River. He was singing Bully in the Alley. We're going to sing that in a little while. And I've got a dragonfly on me. I'm going to have to deal with this. Excuse me. Go away. <laughs> All right, he's a friend of mine. Oh, he's going. Okay. Uh, so anyway, I came across this video. Don't know why I was on the internet looking for what I was looking for, but I came across that. So he sings. That he's the shanty man. John's the shanty man. He sings, and then there's this video, so I can see what's going on. This whole pub full of people join in in beautiful harmony sing in the cruise part of the song and they go back and forth and I said oh my gosh this is something these folks aren't anywhere close to the ocean and they're singing these lovely shanties and what they do they meet once a month and uh, and some, somebody would just get up and start a shanty they're all aficionados of shanties so what well, was really remarkable and I thought well here we are there's the Atlantic Ocean we ought to have a shanty group here. So what did I do? I called Bob Surge. I said, Bob, meet me at Loco Joe's for a beer. And that's, that's where we got started. I said, Bob, I, I told him the whole story about the double journey. And Bob, of course, said, why don't you give a Tuesday talk on this? And so I gave a Tuesday talk. This is 2018, I think we decided, before COVID. And I had a sign-up sheet, and various people here signed up, and we built up a, a group uh, subsequently over time. So now I think we got eight or nine, maybe ten people in, in our group. And you can be in our group too. Tonight you can be in our group. Um, you, when you hear the shanties, and I know you all want to sing and just uh, ready to do it. I can tell by your expression of. Uh, on your faces at your singers. Who's sung in a choir? Who's ever sung in a choir? Choir singers. Uh, barber, uh, what do you call them? Barbershop quartets. There aren't any singers out here then, right? Yeah, this is odd. No, there are a few. Well, that's great. So you, when you hear the shanties, there's the shanty men that's going to sing right here. And the crew, they sing the chorus. You can pick up these choruses very quickly and sing along. Okay? So feel free to do that. Uh, so you join in tonight if if this does pique your interest at all we meet here every Monday uh, when we have good weather and uh, at six o'clock in the evening and it's it's very informal uh, um, one thing we, we sing by ear we don't have music in fact if anybody comes with with their song and they're looking down at a paper like that they get flogged so, I mean, that, it, it gets serious sometimes. Uh, but uh, we, it's, it's a cappella, singing from uh, uh, just listening. Mostly it's listening to songs we've uh, found on the Internet. Somebody will come and say, I found the greatest song on the Internet. And they'll want to sing that. Uh, and we learn it. Uh, and it's so much fun. Um, what else was I going to say about that? Oh. Who saw Morgan Harper's uh, piece in the State Port Pilot this past week? Did you all see that? You should, you should subscribe to the, the, the newspaper, folks. There's all kinds of interesting things there. Especially this article she did about us. Uh, it was a real extensive article and talked all about us. I think you probably still pick one up. It's a magazine. It's called Coast. It's a magazine insert in there. So uh, you can read about us there. We're on Facebook. We're called the Southport Shanty Crew, and you can come and, and uh, follow that.
so where do shanties originate? I mean, where did the songs come from? Uh, it, let's say we're back in the 1800s. Let's say 1850, for example. I'm going to get a couple of folks. Where is it? Oscar and Stu to come up, and we're going to do a little demonstration of how a shanty might happen. Where the term shanty comes from, I'm not going to go into. There's a whole, there's a page and a half on that, right? But this is just where did the music and songs come from? Is that in tune? Good enough for, for government work today. Well, Stephen Foster. Now, you all have heard of Stephen Foster. Come on. Right? My old Kentucky home. Uh, he also wrote a really cool song. You'll, you'll, probably, you'll probably identify it. Oh, it's still there with him. You don't mind standing next to him, do you? I'd be careful if I was you. by Stephen Foster. I think it was published around 1850. So he wrote a lot of music that went into the minstrel shows. The minstrel show during the 1800s was known as the great American art form. And uh, it, it's come into a lot of disrepute since then, but back in the 1800s, people loved the minstrel show. And so he that was one of the songs that was sung in the minstrel show. So let's say you got off of a brig in Baltimore and went into the minstrel show. And you just happened to be a shanty man. Here's what you did with it. Round Cape Horn and back again. Do -da, do -da. Round Cape Horn in the snow and the wind. Oh, do da day. Oh, boys, oh, for California. That's the, that's the shanty. Good. Remember, keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. If you're on the deck of the ship, it's round Cape Horn and back again. Do da, do da. Around Cape Horn in the snow and the wind. Oh, do da day. Oh, boys, fly for California. There's plenty of gold out there, so I'm told, on, on the, the banks, banks of, of the Sacramento. Sacramento. And we're doing some kind of work in time with that song. So that's one way that the, uh, that the uh, shanty uh, song would come into being. There were uh, songs, uh, this was during a time when people didn't have radios. They didn't have what we have, record players and things like that. So they sang at home, and they had popular songs that they sang at festivals and so forth. And so that's where that, that would come from. You may be excused. Thank you so much. Stu and Oscar. So. All right, just a little more background on, on these things. So I, I just think it, well, I owe a, a debt of gratitude to uh, the, the people who brought those songs forward. So yeah, uh, how did we get a Bully in the Alley? We're going to do Bully in the Alley, we're going to do a few others. Who, who originally got this song and wrote it down? So uh, just to name a few people, uh, somewhere I have their names right now. Oh yeah, there was a guy named Dorfinger. He was born in 1910, died in 2000. He was one of these guys who went out with a pencil, 
or a pen and paper and just wrote it down wrote it down because in 1900 that's when the steam uh, the steamships and the steam winches and th and so forth came into being and he didn't didn't need crews singing shanty anymore but he just hooked it up to the steam engine and pulled pulled the thing up they were called donkeys uh, a Stan Hugel known as the last shanty man he was born in 1906 died in 1992 and Cecil Sharp going way back there 1859 to 1924 these guys went out and collected those songs later on people like Alan Lomax and Pete Seeger uh, brought, brought them forward as well then you, and I call that the, the first folk revival the second folk revival is in the 60s and you may have heard of the Irish Rovers the Clancy Brothers the Brothers Four um, some of those other folk singers and you have a banjo and uh, and a guitar and maybe a fiddle and they were uh, they had a lot of fun singing in, to audiences in the 60s so that was the second folk revival and we picked a lot of this up well we get it off the internet <laughs> mostly I think that's where we, we find it I mean there are books that have these songs in them but uh, so anyway that's a let me make sure I haven't left anything out um, yeah well, the, the thing about the name I, I wanted to make sure we we're clear on that when I first started this group, I called it, you guessed it, the Southport Shanty Singers. There you are. Um, the Southport Shanty Singers. And then uh, Bob says, uh, says, Tim, we got a problem here. I said, what? He said, well, there's already a group called the Southport Shanty Singers. And these are the Menhaden fishermen. When, when this was a Menhaden place. And Donnie, where is, it? is he? He's still back. Thank you. Yeah. Well, he's going to talk to you about that and explain that. You know, so we changed the name to the Southport Shanty Crew, just to keep that clear in your mind. And uh, the other thing is, we're going to do uh, Rosie Ann. That's one of the songs. There's a, a film made, uh, I've learned, of, uh, at the uh, Cape Fear Museum. And the Shanty uh, folks went up, up there in 1993 and did a, a presentation of their songs. And a lot of those, these guys are gone now. Uh, but uh, they they did do, do this one little film and uh, had some Rosie Ann on it. That's what we're going to do as soon as Donnie's uh, done explaining this whole Menhaden issue. But uh, we do it a little bit differently. The Brothers Four, if you go back and look, they did it back in the 1960s. So uh, the one thing to, to listen to in this song is they, they said, back up, back up. We're not going to do that. But in the, And Donnie will explain some more of that. One other thing, belay. Do, who knows what belay means? You guys do. I know you do. Belay, okay. Belay means stop it. Stop whatever it is. That was one of the best things a sailor ever heard was belay. They could stop whatever they were doing, which was usually where the mate or the captain said belay. You'll hear that word a few times. Thought I heard the captain say. These are common phrases in shanties. You'll hear it over and over in various shanties. What else? There was one other thing. Uh, oh, Cape Horn. Going around Cape Horn. You'll hear that tonight uh, about Cape Horn a little bit. Uh, sh shanties didn't often make sense. Sometimes they didn't make sense they, if it was a historical shanty. The history wouldn't be exactly right. Didn't have to make sense. It just had to be rhythmic. Okay, that's it. Donnie? Okay. I'll start talking with the crew. Thank you, Tim. In case you were wondering why I was moving around, uh, the sun sets in the west and it was sitting on this porch pretty good. So that's why I kept moving. Uh, what I'm here is to talk about Men Hayden fishing shanties. There are several different types of shanties. And well, I'm here to talk about the Men Hayden fishing shanties. Now, Bob gave me two hours, so I'll be brief. Okay. <laughs> All right. The origin can be traced back to West Africa during the slave trade, basically. Uh, the shanty singers that we're talking about, you're in Southport got to remember there were three centers for Menhaden fishing in North Carolina. It was Moorhead, Beaufort, and Southport. After that, 
They went to Georgetown, South Carolina. It was Moss Point, Mississippi, Cameron, Louisiana, all the way up to Sandy Hook, New Jersey. Now I'm speaking not as a Manhattan fisherman. I never fished a day in my life, so don't get it twisted. I am not a Manhattan fisherman. My grandfather was and my dad was. At one time I was on the dock right over there when my dad was working on a purse boat. And one of the guys said, Will, is your son gonna be like you and your father? He said, no, look at him, he's getting seasick on the dock. And I was, <laughs> so I was not a Menhaden fisherman. You gotta remember that Menhaden fishing was an art and a process. These, the way it was is, anybody that's got perfume, cookies, these uh, omega oil substance and all that, that's all part of Menhaden fishing. And to have a good Menhaden fishing area, you'd have to have, I call six things. One was habitat, where were they hanging out at? Spotting, encircling, trapping, harvesting, and processing. Now, when these guys went out on the boats, in the old days, when we're talking to Menhaden fishing, the shanty singers were after the days of the real Menhaden fishermen when they didn't have power blocks. Uh, my cousin, uh, Charles Pete Jordan, he just passed away last year. He fished for 70 years, and back in the day, when they got to the fish, what would happen is the spotter would be in what was known as the crow's nest at first. And he would spot the fish. Then they sent one guy out in a little dinghy, and my cousin Pete did that job for a while, and he would row to the center where they had the Menhaden fish. Once he got there, he was like the remote spotter because then the two purse boats took off. One had the captain's boat, and one was the first mate's boat. Now they had a net that was about 18 I think it was about 1,800 feet long. Half was in one boat, half was in the other one. And they back off and they start down. And they start down together. And when the guy in the little dinghy said, spread them out, they spread them out. And circle the fish. And when they encircled the fish, the Menhaden, they had a thing called a tom weight. They would drop that to close the bottom of the net, making sure they didn't get out. And once they did that, this is where the singing came in. This is where the real shanty singing. Now, there are a few people in the audience that I know that their family members also was a Menhaden fisherman. One of the most famous Menhaden fishermen around here was named Elias Gore, AKA Nehi. We do have at the uh, Maritime Museum a film of him back in the 1930s. He's pulling the net. Now, to give you a little idea, these nets weighed about 1,100 pounds dry. Okay, now imagine you got water and you got fish in it. And the reason they were pulling the nets and singing because the shanty usually would be one of your stronger singers. Now some shanty singers that I was told about because like I said, I was never out there on the water. One was named Nimmy Williams. One was named Mr. R.D. Stanley. Uh, my cousin David Floyd, who just uh, recently passed away. He was a shanty singer, Pete and all those. So what they would do is the lead singer would start it off. Also remember that lead singer was someone that had enough knowledge about Menhaden fishing to know when were you to pull a net because you had to pull a net back up in the boats, the two purse boats, because the big boat was coming alongside you and at that time, since they didn't have the power blocks because the rest of it was block and tackle, they had a dipping net and they were dipping them out. So when that boat got up beside them, they had to bring it to fish up so you didn't have a whole lot of water going into the boat because you see they got paid by the hundreds of thousands of fish. And that was one of the processes that created the singing. Uh, and we have a lot of them. There's a picture that I'm sure a lot of you've seen if you're on, what is that? The Southwood Clam Diggers, I think? <laughs> Something like that. There is a picture that has my uncle in there. Uh, and I see Reverend Davis over there, his uncle in there. Uh, a gentleman named Homer McKithen and a lot of people from Southport, they were on a boat. Now, I have an uncle named George Jackson. He was the first mate of a boat. And Junius Jackson, he was the first mate. Now, the Cozark is a boat that my uncle George worked on. They call him George Vatlas. And his job was to drive one of the other boats because you can go online and see this. And the neat thing about it is they took off together like this and when they gave the signal, they spread out to open up. Now, that was before they got the plane spotters. So once they got the plane spotters, the guy in the crow's nest, he didn't have to worry about going up in there spotting the fish because the plane was spotter. And the famous plane spotter around here, my dad and everybody call him Hall. It 
it wasn't until about three years ago I found out his last name was Waters because they said Hall is spotting the fish and when they spotted the fish they could see them from a distance and they would send out the purse boats and you'd have the uh, the big boat going out also and what the job was is when they gave the signal the purse boats would open up the big boat would drive the menhaden back into the net and once they cinched it all up it was pulling time again until they got what is known as a power block and then it had to pull very much now and some of the old songs that they sang on these menhaden fishing boats or uh, one of them was called weldon now don't get this twisted these songs were not made for singing in church on Sunday morning or singing out on the street corner on Saturday night. These were sort of vulgar songs. These songs were made up a lot of times as they go along. Now some of the shanty singers were good singers because Mr. Eugene Gore was a captain but he was also uh, a member of First Baptist Church. And Nimmy Williams and his brothers were excellent singers but on the water. Now I don't know if they sang the real nasty version of these songs. I can't say because I was not out there. But that's the one thing about shanty singers. And like the song, a lot of them sang was called Weldon, going back to Weldon. Because remember, Menhaden fishing for a long time around this area, my grandfather was a Menhaden fisherman and he died in 1919, 1918, so you can tell how far back it goes. And these individuals were out there on the water. And if you didn't catch no fish, uh, you didn't eat and the neat thing about you know when they caught a lot of fish is when they stopped blowing when they come I think it was like one two or three to the factory and then so many and then after that every time they tooted that horn there's a hundred thousand fish and Usually the wives would be listening if they're outside hanging clothes They tell you shut up and you know what was going on the boats had come in with their catch and This went on for many years in Southport these same individuals not only fish here they would left, but leave and go to Reedsville, Virginia. There's still a plant in Reedsville, Virginia. And Sandy Hook, New Jersey. And sometimes they would head down to Georgetown, South Carolina, and Louisiana, Cameron, Louisiana, Moss Point, Mississippi, and places of that nature. But the Southwood industry, I think, ended about 1970 because we had Brunswick Navigation and over there on Fish Factory Road, that's what it was for. And then there was another one I called, I think Smith was also over there. But one of the things that the people in Southport uh, did not like, and how many of you have been in Southport less than 12 years? Raise your hands. Okay. If you've been in here less than 12 years, how many have been in Southport more than 30 years or 40 years? Well, the ones that are way back, you know one thing that when the Menhaden fish came in, what happened? That processing plant, it was the smell of them cooking those fish and a lot of people hated the smell. Now, for people who depended on that for living, that was money. And you know, they had certain captains uh, in Southport. I knew of two black captains, uh, Mr. Raphael Parker and Eugene Gore. Uh, but uh, some of the names that was like Homer McKeithen, uh, and there was a gentleman named, I think, Lynn Lowry, but that was near the end of the uh, season and all. But these were guys that were out there, and these men, uh, sang those shanty songs out there and after the power block came into being uh, it was no longer required so then these groups were formed. Moorhead City's got a group, in fact one of Moorhead City's group sang at the Metropolitan uh, I think it's the uh, Opera or the music, the, the place in uh, New York. Carnegie they, Hall. Carnegie Hall, thank you Tim. Carnegie Hall, they sang at Carnegie Hall. And one of them who sang at Carnegie Hall, his daughter lives here in Southport, and his sister lives in Southport. And that's my one hour and 30 minutes, uh, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you so very much. Thanks, Donnie, thanks. An hour and 32 minutes just flew by there. Okay, so. The South Fork Shanty crew, they've been itching to get up here and sing, or it might be because they have scurvy and bed bugs. I don't know, but they are itching to get up here and sing. So I'll bring them up, and we'll, uh, we're going to do Rosie Ann, and that's the, uh, that's the shanty song, and this is a clean version of it, so you don't need to cover your ears or anything like that.
guys are going to be in the wheelchair now and the girls are going to be up there. Yeah, we switched it around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bob Surridge, ladies and gentlemen, there he is, in the flesh. Oh, Rosie Ann, my Rosie Ann, bye bye, my Rosie Ann. I'm going away, but not to stay, and I won't be home tomorrow. A dollar a day is a fisherman's pay. Bye bye, my, my Rosie Ann. It's easy come, easy slip away, and I won't be home tomorrow. Steamboat coming round the bend, bye-bye my Rosie and I. It's loaded down with fishermen, and I won't be home tomorrow. Sweet Rosie and bye bye my Rosie and I. I'm going away, but not to stay, and I won't be home tomorrow. Well, we're sailing north across the bay. Bye bye my Rosie and I. We won't be home for many a day. Captain say bye bye my Rosie and I don't you wanna go home on your next payday and, and I won't be home tomorrow bye bye song is one of our favorites. We usually start our show off with, uh, I didn't mention this. I knew there was something I wanted to mention. We uh, uh, do hire ourselves out. Uh, yeah, so if you want a nautical entertainment, we do skits, we, we recite poetry, uh, we do tricks, uh, and, and all kinds of things. And it, it's not real expensive. We just need enough money for grog. Uh, so, I mean, and uh, tonight, you know, Leave a dollar or two here, all right? Because we're going to have a little party later on. Um, so, anyway, this is a favorite. It's called, what is it called? Do you know? Bully. 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 Now, that is Okay. Sure. Stand right there. Bully is a work song. It's a halyard shanty. So help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alleyway. Hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Bully down shin bong out. Now Sally is a gal that I love dearly. Way, hey. Bully in the alley. Sally is a gal that I splice nearly. Bully down shin bone out. Oh, help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Hey, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Bully down shin bone out. For seven years I courted Sally. Hey, hey. 
Believe the alley. But all she did was dilly and dally. Bully down shin for help. Oh, help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Bully down shin for I bought her gin and I bought her rum. Oh, way, hey. Bully in the alley, I bought her wine of white and red. Oh, bully down, shin for now. Oh, help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Bully down, shin for now. I bought her silk and I bought her laces. Way, hey. Bully in the alley, I took her out to all the fine places. Bully down, Shinbo now. Oh, help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley, help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Bully down, Shinbo now. Now I'll leave Sal and I'll become a sailor. Way, hey. Bully in the alley. I'll leave Sal and ship aboard a whaler. Bully down, shin bow down. Oh, help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Bully down, shin bow down. And I'll come back and I'll marry Sally. Way, hey, bully in the alley. We'll have kids and count them by the tally. Bully down, shin bow now. Oh, help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Bully down, shin bow now. I thought I heard the old man saying, Way, hey. Bully in the alley. One more turn and we're be laying. Bully down, shin bow now. Oh, help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Bully down, shin bow There's a hellion shanty. I, I failed to mention, I don't know if I mentioned that, there were different rhythms for uh, the various songs. And when you're doing the halyards, that was pulling ropes like this or like that. I'm no ex expert on that. But there were capstan shanties where you were turning a capstan around and around a circle. There were pump shanties where you're pumping the bilges. Different shanties for different things that you were doing aboard the ship. That was a hell of your shanty. One other background on that. Help me, Bob. I'm bully in the alley. Now, there's a lot of theories about what that means. It, the, the common uh, theory on that is bully in the alley is you're drunk. You, you, you've been, you, your, your mates are going inside. They're drinking. They left you out in the alley. Shinbo now was someplace in Liverpool, maybe New York. I don't know where. Bermuda. There, what, where was it? Bermuda. Bermuda. <laughs> was, was, there were there were these bad areas of town, and uh, and Shinbone Al was in one of them. And so the guy is help me, Bob. Um, bully in the alley. So that's what that's all about. Let me introduce everybody to you while we're up here uh, letting off steam. We call these folks over here on this side our sea wenches. <laughs> and jo Joni, Dawn, Liz, Ingrid. Over this, the sea winches. Over here, I have various names for. I have various names for these, none of which I can say actually on here. But you know, Bob, Stu, Oscar, Jim, Zeb. Look, I'm 71 years old. I can have these moments of inactivity. So, all right, who wants to do the next one? Okay. Okay. Ingrid's going to Ingrid's going to come up and tell you a little bit about this song. I love it. You hear thunder? You might hear thunder. What do you think? This 
song, Away Rio, is a capstan shanty. So you would turn the capstan to raise the anchor. And the title is Away Rio, and it refers to the Rio Grande, which is a river not in Mexico, but in Brazil, where there was a lot of gold mining. So I'll sing you a song, a good song of the sea. Away Rio. I'll sing you a song if you'll sing it with me. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's Away Rio. Away Rio. It's the heavy well, my bonnie young gals, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. Say, have you heard of the Rio Grande? Oh, Away, Rio! It's there that the river brings down golden sand, and, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's Away, Rio! Away, Rio! It's very well, my bunny young gals, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. The anchor is weighed and the sails they are set. Away, Rio! The girls we are leaving will never forget. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio! Away, Rio! It's very well, my body, young gals, and we're bound for the up your sea chest will get underway. Away, Rio! The girls we are leaving can take our half pay. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio. Away, Rio. Hit it very well, my body young gals. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. To Sally and goodbye to Sue. Away, Rio! And to them that's a listening, it's farewell to you. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio. Away, Rio! It's very well, my body young gals, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. We've a jolly good ship and a jolly good crew. Away, Rio! A jolly good mate and a good skipper too. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio. Away, Rio! It's very well, my funny young gals. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. Heave with the will and heave long and strong. Away, Rio! And sing the good chorus, for tis a good song. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio. Away, Rio! It's very well, my funny young gals. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. Heave only one pole and vast heave in bole. Away, Rio! Heave steady because we say farewell today. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio. Away, Rio! It's very well, my body young gals, and we're bound for the Now the capstan, uh, we wanted to bring a capstan out here so we could actually do that going around and around. For those of you who don't know what a capstan is, it's a round thing about that high up. It's got holes all around it. You stick your pole in there and you start walking like this. So that song 
that song would have been sung as we're going around and around, bringing up these huge anchors that are, of course, stuck in the mud. Uh, and so it's, it's quite a task so, to do that. And you need a good shanty like a way rile. Lovely, lovely song. I like it. You did a good job. Now let's see. Who else wants to sing? Who wants to sing? Who put up your hand? Oscar, did you put your hand up? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tell, tell me about the song. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to sing The Wellerman. I think a lot of you are familiar with that song. It was a TikTok uh, sensation uh, last year. Um, its origin is the mid 1800s. Uh, there really was a whaling company in New Zealand called the Weller Brothers. And that is sort of the origin, or you know, the, the origin of the song. And um, it was a, a whaling song. Uh, it wasn't quite the same as the shanty, where it's rhythmic and it was for a particular task. This was to pass the time away when um, they were spending long hours on the whaling ship, on the whaling bar. There once was a ship that put to sea. The name of that ship was Ability. The winds blew hard and the bow dipped down. Blow by, bully boys, blow. Ha! Soon may the Roman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the talking is done, we'll take our leave and go. She had not been two weeks from shore when down on her a right whale bore. The captain called his crew and swore, we'll take that whale in tow. Ha! Soon may before the boat had hit the water, the whale's tail came up and caught her, all hands to the side, harpoon and fodder, when that whale died below. Ha! Soon may the whale come to bring us sugar and tea and rum, one day when the drunken is done, we'll take our leave and go. No line was cut, no whale was freed. The captain's mind was not on greed, but he belonged to the whaleman's creed. She took that ship in tow. Oh, so may the whaleman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the drunken is done, we'll take our leave and go. For 40 days or maybe more, the line went slack and tight once more. All hands were lost, there were only four. Still that whale did go. Oh, so may the last I heard, the fight's still on, the line's not cut, and the whale's not gone. The wellerman makes his regular call to encourage the captain, crew, and all. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue is done, we'll take our leave and go. Well, uh, Oscar's out of breath, so am I. So we'll take a little break here. Okay, break's over. <laughs> what, we got one, we more? one more. One more. Don, did you want to sing? Don wants to sing. The, you know, the, I would just to say this before Don gets up here and explains a little bit about this song. Uh, th these folks um, love to sing, and who knew it? Uh, who knew? that they would uh, get involved in this, or that I would, uh, any of us. We do this because it's so much fun. Uh, it doesn't matter whether we have an audience. Like I say, we, we meet here on, on Mondays, and it's a get-together, it's a club, it's, it's a, a meeting of friends. We're all pretty close now, and uh, I love them all. Uh, don't let them know that, because I had to maintain discipline. But, uh, uh, so I think that's all. But you might want to join us. Uh, we're looking for some more members. And uh, like I say, it's all for fun and it's all free. Okay. All right. Um, the next song we're going to do is called Santiana. 
It is a song about the Mexican-American War during the 1840s. Um, however, this being the historical society, perhaps it's not very historically accurate. Um, however, it is a song about the Mexican general, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, and General Zachary Taylor. Oh, Santiana gained a day away. Santiana, Napoleon of the West, they say, along the plains of Mexico. Well, either up and away. It was a fast and clipper ship away, Santiana, and an old salty egg for a captain too, along the plains of Mexico. Well, either up and away we'll go, away, Santiana, either up and away we'll go, along the Santiana fought for gold away, Santiana, around Cape Horn through the ice and snow, along the plains of Mexico, well, either up and away. On the field of Valle del Rey, oh, Santiana. Well, both his legs got blown away along the plains of Mexico. Well, in a up and away we'll go, oh, Santiana. Of it was a fierce and bitter strife away, Santiana. The General Taylor took his life along the plains of Mexico. Either up and away we'll go, away, Santiana. Along the plains of Mexico, Santiana, now we mourn away, Santiana. We left him buried off Cape Horn. Along the plains of Mexico. Nice job, nice job. So, Santiana, uh, I think that's the last one. Now, we, we do have an encore. Would you like to hear one more? The, uh, the mosquitoes aren't too bad. We could do one more. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> no flogging. No one gets flogged. That's too bad. I wanted to demonstrate flogging, but uh, that's not going to happen. So, we do. Stu, you lead us on this, don't you? No, uh, the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, right, hello. This is an audience for taste, patient song. I'm going to divide the audience into the left hand, my left, and the right hand over here. On the left, you're, what you're supposed to sing is, way, hey. The right hand side will sing, up she rises. Way, hey, up she rises. What about the guys in the middle? These people in the middle. The middle or the lowest? Pick a side. Pick a side. You do what you like. Just sing. Way, hey, up she rises. 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 Way, hey, up she rises.
morning. What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. Oh, wave, hey, up she rises. Wave, hey, up she rises. Wave, hey, up she rises. Early in the morning. We'll shave his belly with a rusty razor. Shave his belly with a rusty razor. Shave his belly with a rusty razor. Early in the morning. Oh, wave, hey. Put him in a long boat till he's sober. Put him in a long boat till he's sober. Put him in a long boat till he's sober. Early in the morning. Oh, way, way, up she rises. Way, way, up she rises. Way, way, up she rises. Early in the morning. Put him in a bed with a captain's daughter. Put him in a bed with a captain's daughter. Put him in a bed with a captain's daughter. Early in the morning. Oh, way. Morning. Have you ever seen the captain's daughter? Have you ever seen the captain's daughter? Have you ever seen the captain's daughter? Early in the morning. Oh, wave, hey, up she rises. Wave, hey, up she rises. Wave, hey, up she rises. Early in the morning. That's what we do with a drunken sailor. That's what we do with a drunken sailor. That's what we do with a drunken sailor. Early in the morning. Oh, wave. for the evening. That's a song that was made famous back during the second folk revival, revival by the Irish Roller and the Clancy Brothers. Those folks singing that song up around New York and those places. So, hope you enjoyed it. Bob, did you want to say anything? Else? I thought when we sang that, that did finish the meeting. Uh, all stand together for a photo. Right here. <laughs> we don't usually get that close to the sea, which is quite nice for the photo. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. We are pretty. Aren't we? <laughs> okay, thank you. Right here for the crew. And while um, Liz, Liz Fuller, our vice president, is coming coming up, I just want to take a, a moment and I want to thank Morgan Harper for the article about the shanty singers that was in the Coast Magazine. Thank you, Morgan. It was a great article. Liz and friends. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to let you know about the um, uh, programs we have coming up in October. Can you hear me now? Okay. The programs we have coming up in October. So we have four programs in October. Three of them will be outdoors, like this lovely one. Um, on the second Tuesday, we're going to have a Zoom program. We're going to have uh, Mike Royal, uh, Southport native, who's living in Texas now, is going to Zoom in, along with um, uh, Catherine Huffam and uh, Libby Merritt and some people from Southport High School. They're going to take a, a walk down memory lane and tell us about what it was like uh, when they were in high school and they were in the show Pygmalion. The next day, we're going to have, people are so excited, they're blowing their horns. <laughs> so the next day, uh, we'll have Paddle Through History, Bob Surridge, will be leading a kayak tour. And he'll be leading a kayak tour in 
Rice Creek. Rice Creek. And so uh, you're welcome to go on a kayak tour and enjoy the outdoors and also get some history. And then um, we will be having on October 23rd, we're going to be bringing back our Living Voices of the Past, which is always popular. We weren't able to do it last year. We're going to have 10 historic characters come to life in the old burying grounds. It's going to be wonderful. We hope to see you there. And then on the 30th, this year is the 100th anniversary of the um, Wilmington Cape Fear Pilots Association. So to commemorate that, we uh, cleaned the um, monument, the Lost Pilots Monument in the cemetery with a generous donation from the River Pilots Association. And on the 30th, we're going to be having a ceremony of remembrance um, at the old burying ground, and we hope to see you all there for that too. I'll be sending out an email with all the information, but we look forward to seeing you in October. Thank you, Liz. Uh, at this this moment, the only thing that's between the shanty crew and a drug is a motion to adjourn. Pat Kirkland made that motion. I, I heard it. All right. All those in favor? Yay. Okay. Thank you all very very much for coming. We had a, we had a good time, and we hope you did too. Thank you, shanty crew.